I was what I was what women call a late bloomer and men call a prude. I didn't have sex until college. I didn't know how to masturbate. Didn't figure it out, didn't try to. I figured what good would it do me if I didn't know what sex feels like. Once I discovered dry humping, I was content with that. <laughs> My mom had me believing that sex was bad, something for trashy, depraved people, unless you were married. When I was a freshman in high school, a tale circulated of a girl who had sex with this junior in his truck, and she screamed so loud that all the windows in his truck shattered. <laughs> The girl in question later told me that what actually happened was that she was indeed screaming, but she was flailing around in delight from the great sex, and she accidentally kicked her foot through one of the windows. <laughs> the clarification was no relief to me and still made sex seem incredibly dangerous. <laughs> so in my first year of college, I was grinding with the guy I was hanging out with when he wanted to have sex with me, and I told him no. He reassured me that it was okay, we didn't have to do the penis and the vagina stuff, that we could do something else <laughs> to give each other pleasure. He looked at me with a manufactured sexy look as he slid <laughs> downwards and said, I know ways. I knew he meant oral sex, but this presentation of his supposed talents, this slimy goading, did not turn me on. I laughed, and I left. I returned to my friends and told them the story, and for the next few years, it became our go-to joke. Any problem came up that needed fixing. Can anybody help with geology? I know ways. <laughs> my car won't start. I know ways. I feel like if I could just throw up, I'd feel better. I know ways. I had this guy in mind for a while every time I thought of sex and men, men as sleaze buckets, and my mom's admonitions of premarital sex being the activity of disgusting, wretched, common garbage people, and the thoughts of getting wounded by shards of glass, all hovered in my mind. Guys kept dumping me and calling me prude when I wouldn't fuck them, or at least give them a blowjob or a courtesy handy. <laughs> Finally, I got an actual boyfriend. It worked out well for me because we met in the UK just as I was days from leaving. We hit it off, kissed, and then when I got back to the States, we got to know each other through correspondence. There was no pressure for sex. Our relationship grew the old-fashioned way, in love letters, before Facebook temptations to play detective existed, before incessantly checking for an email reply kept a person chained to electronics, and when daily international phone calls were still too expensive to be a feasible option. We would exchange letters and photos and plan our monthly phone calls. When he came for an in-person visit, I was ready to have actual sex. No more dry humping for this gal. <laughs> I was in love. I wasn't scared, and dignity be damned, I went for it. It was spectacular. I loved it. <laughs> I knew what felt good and why. But there was something in our sex life that seemed to be missing. Sound. <laughs> I didn't know what sounds to make, what words to say out loud. My only reference was film and TV, and I wasn't at a place where I was making noise or where it felt comfortable to try that. I thought, surely I'll learn in time from the guys I'm with. A long distance relationship with in-person visits every few months can only last so long. After that, there was Dan, the rugby player. We were getting hot and heavy on his couch while Basic Instinct played on TV. I was taking note of his oohs and oh yes. But then I heard, ooh, hold on, hold on, as he climbed off of me to watch the scene in which Sharon Stone uncrosses her legs. I left. 
There was Chris, the New York City musician. Things were escalating in his bed when he suddenly, purposefully, tightened his lips over mine and belched into my mouth. He fell over laughing. I felt it coming up and I just had to do it, he said. I left. I wasn't learning anything about proper bedroom talk with these fools. I met Tom, who became my boyfriend, and we were together for many years. I finally learned true dirty talk. Not only did I learn it, I was inspired to create it. <laughs> he was so into talking filthy that it got me going, got me hot, and had phrases pouring out of my mouth that I never thought I could speak. I got into watching porn because of and for him. When I first met him, I made fun of him for being a habitual texter. But not only was I now a texter also, I was a sexter. <laughs> this had all gone way beyond some nasty little pillow talk. It was ridiculous. Over time, I grew weary. Our relationship was falling apart. I became frustrated with sexting, trying to use one hand to complete business and the other hand to text. <laughs> Have you seen phones from 2006? <laughs> I was increasingly turned off by the porn with guys who had their feet on women's faces. I was getting angry with all of Tom's dirty talk. The stuff I'd been wanting to engage in for so long now felt like a slap in the face. You like it, whore? Are you my dirty little slut? Beg me for it, you cunt. I wanted to think of equivalent names to call him, but couldn't. Yeah, I like it, you little shithead. Man whore. Try calling a guy slut in dirty talk and see if you're taken seriously. A sense of lost respect slowly washed over me. Maybe the respect was never there. The frustrations were symptoms of enormous problems and we crumbled into a pile of pebbles. I left. <sighs> there was Steven, the real estate agent. He loved to whisper in my ear, your boobies make my wiener hard. <laughs> then there was Lewis whose simple refrain was BAM! 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 <laughs> These men, the noises they made, the things they said and did in the sack, might have been right for them, and maybe even some other women, but not right for me. Or maybe I was with some real idiots. But I was learning from myself. My late blooming had made me so self-conscious, so worried about getting everything right, that I hadn't been getting lost in the moment, which at least some of those guys had been getting right. I wasn't enjoying it enough. It was a cumulative process, but I started relaxing, making my own request, making whatever bellow, cry, phrase, or moan felt right to me, and not caring what sounds the guys made or what words they used. It depended on the relationship, and it depended on me. Instead of waiting for the perfect lesson or demonstration, I became my own noisemaker. <laughs> I now like watching old porn movies from the 70s and laughing when an extremely hairy man says to a woman, tell me you love getting plowed. <laughs> and the woman screams in ecstasy. I'm with someone who will sing, once bitten, twice shy in bed to me when I ask him to. Enthusiastically, no questions asked. That's pillow talk. I'm quiet when it suits me, and when the mood takes me somewhere else, I go somewhere else. No self-consciousness, no expectations, and no fear.